Now, the idea of nested tracks is you can combine many of the tracks in our project down to one, clearing up CPU processing for those tracks. But we could undo it later if we need to edit them again. I have a project set up here with some drums, bass, and guitar, and some vocals I just recorded. As you can see, there's four tracks of vocals with effects on each one. And the effects are taking up some CPU processing that I don't want to waste or use while I record some other instruments. But I still want to go back to edit this later if I need to. Let's hear what it sounds like right now. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't want to fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no. Just want to make it stop. So I want to combine all these vocals into one track that doesn't take up any CPU processing. There's a few different ways we could do that. The first way is we could select all these tracks by holding the shift key and then right click it and then choosing move tracks to new sub project, which is going to create a new project or sub project with just the vocals in it. And then create one file that basically renders all the vocals in this project like this. It renders it and it puts it all into one file, which should sound exactly the same. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. But again, it uses no CPU processing. So our computer will run faster as it's not running all those plugins. And it also created this sub project in a different tab right over here. Here are the vocals from before. And here's the rendered file that's not using any CPU processing. But there's one problem with this method. Although we can close the sub project and get it back at any point by double clicking this and it reopens the sub project, we could do any editing to this we want, hit save, and it re renders it and updates the file that's in our original project. But the one problem with this is if we wanted to edit our vocals, we now have to do it in our sub project. And listening in here, we just have our vocals. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. So for this workflow, I don't prefer to use sub projects. So let's undo this. So we're back to where we were before. And instead, let's try to render these files. But first, to combine them, we'll put them all in a folder. Select them all by holding down Shift and right click and choose Move Tracks to Folder. We'll put them in a new folder track, which shows up up here. Let's give it a name. Now these tracks are now in this folder. And again, it's still gonna sound exactly the same. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. But now we could render this folder track to another track. Let's right click this track, go to Render Freeze Tracks, and choose to render our tracks over here to mono, stereo, or multi-channel. These vocals are mono, but the effect on them is actually stereo. So I'm gonna choose render tracks to stereo. It renders it and creates a new track up here, which again, should sound exactly the same. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. And because these tracks are muted, they're not gonna take up any CPU processing. But we should double check in our preferences, control P on the PC, command comma on the Mac. That opens up our preferences. And we'll go down here to mute solo and make sure this is checked, which it is by default to not process any muted tracks in the project. So it'll save CPU processing when the tracks are muted. And these tracks are now muted, so they're not taking up any CPU processing. But now it sounds exactly the same. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrow. But it's on a different track. So instead, we can move this to the folder like this. We could delete this track as we don't need it. And we could play it from here. Unmute this one, but mute these in order to save the CPU processing. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrow. And to see the difference, let's open up the performance meter. Let's unmute these so we can see the processing going on right here. 
And if we mute these again, now these tracks go to 0% CPU. So it's using no processing for those tracks. So now we could hide the child tracks in this folder. We could do it from here by hitting the button once to make them smaller, or again, to make them even smaller. But what I prefer to do is go back to our preferences, scroll down under appearance and track control panel. And right over here is the default for collapsing our folders. Normal, small, and collapsed. I prefer to choose either normal, small, and hidden, or just normal and hidden. And if we choose this, hit OK. Now we can hit this button and it hides those tracks as they're not playing because they're muted. So now we're not using any CPU processing. Now we could work on other tracks in our project without taking up CPU processing from the vocals. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. And it sounds exactly the same. Now this is a good way to work. And if you want to undo it at any point, just delete this, reopen the folders, and unmute these tracks. And we're back to what we had before. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. And while that works pretty well, I prefer to do it a bit differently. Instead of rendering these tracks or the folder track, I prefer to freeze the folder track. Just select it, right click, go to the same menu, but instead of rendering it over here, we could freeze it over here. Again, we could do it to mono, but because I'm using stereo effects, I'm gonna freeze tracks to stereo. And if we choose this, again, it renders it, but this time, it puts the file right on the folder track. And it looks like we're hearing both at the same time, this stuff and this, but we're really not. Because if we open the child tracks, they're not sending to the master parent sent, at least while the track is frozen. But this is still gonna use CPU processing, even though these tracks aren't sending to the folder. Here's to the good days. Which you could see if we open up the performance meter. It's still using processing on these tracks. But because we're not hearing it, we could still just mute them and hide them over here. So again, it's gonna sound exactly the same, except with freezing the tracks, it actually locks the item. So we can't accidentally move it as you probably don't want to. But again, it's gonna sound exactly the same. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrow. Now if we wanna undo it, just right click it, go to freeze tracks, and choose down here to unfreeze the track or folder. That takes away that item. Now we can just show the child tracks and unmute them, and we're back to being able to edit our original vocals. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrow. And we're happy with our changes, just freeze it again. Render freeze tracks. Freeze tracks to stereo, mute these, and hide them over here. But to show you how quick this really is, let's do it from the beginning. We'll go back to the original project like this, just select the tracks, put them in a new folder right here, name the folder, right click the folder, and just freeze it to stereo. It renders it right here. We can mute this and then hide it. And just like that, we created a nested track. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. And if you wanna make any changes later, just right click it, unfreeze it down here, show the tracks, unmute them, and we're back to the beginning. Here's to the good days, to the sorrow. Make our changes, freeze the track again, mute the tracks, hide them, and we're back to working with our nested track. I just think it's a good workflow if you're trying to save CPU processing by nesting your tracks down to one, but still giving us the option to edit them later, and then freeze them or unfreeze them again to get back to whichever way you want to work. So that's pretty much it. 
That's creating nested tracks in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys. Let's go. Oh!